this video, we're going through 10 different drone moves that you can use when you're filming yourself, when you're out as a solo creator. So whether you have something like a DJI Mini 2 or something like an Autel Evo Lite, well, you can do these drone moves with any drone. Now recently I was out in Joshua Tree. I was outside the park, so don't worry, I wasn't flying inside the national park, but I was filming a video where I was hiking to the top of a mountain and I used my drone to film the entire intro sequence. Now when I did that, there was a lot of different shots that I used to capture the entire hike from different perspectives. And all of these techniques and different drone moves are super useful when you're out by yourself. But let's not waste any more time, let's just get right into the first drone move. And that is the tripod. So the easiest way to use your drone is put it way up in the sky and use it as like a floating tripod. So all you have to do is fly to the position of where you want to see the scene and then take your hand off the controller and interact with the scene. So for this shot, I'm just walking up the mountain. I put the camera in a spot where I can see this epic landscape. And you'll want the drone to sit up there for a little bit longer. So once you get it into that location, try to get yourself out of frame, walk into frame, and then walk out. So you have a lot of footage to work with when you're using this kind of a shot. Now move number two is one of the essentials that you want to get when you're out filming by yourself, and that is the follow behind. Now this is where you position the drone directly behind you and you follow yourself through the scene. Now when you're using the controller, the easiest way to do this is to walk in a straight line and you just push forward on the right joystick. This is going to move the drone forward through space and it's going to follow you. You want to try to maintain the exact distance from you and the drone so that you have this kind of third person video game feel as you're interacting with the scene. Now this gets right into my first tip, which is if you have active track on your drone, use it to your advantage. So with my DJI Mavic 3, I can follow in any direction. So when I'm doing the follow behind or the follow in front, I'll just drag a box on the screen to grab myself, put the drone in either backwards or forwards, and the drone will maintain the distance between us. And so I can have the controller down by my side, I can set it down on the ground and just get a quick shot of me walking. You can get these shots where it looks more natural and you're not actually having to control the drone because it's all doing it through the automation. However, one downside when you're using automation is that it's not gonna be as clean. So on DJI drones, you actually see a lot of bumping when you're walking or moving, especially here when I'm spinning around myself, you using the active track. And so one solution that I use is adding a little bit of stabilization in post and it ends up cleaning up the shot so that it looks much more smooth. So move number three is a fun one, but it's done with editing and it's called the dolly zoom. So what you wanna do is center yourself up in the frame and then fly backwards away from you. And then in your editing software, you're gonna keyframe a steady zoom in as the drone is flying backwards. And you wanna make sure that you're matching the zoom to the actual drone movement. You're gonna create this effect where the background is growing and it creates this really dynamic looking shot. And with this, you wanna shoot at the highest resolution possible because you are zooming in on the footage in your editing software. Now move number four is one of my personal favorites and that is the reverse to the reveal. So what you wanna do is just fly your drone backwards in one direction and you're gonna start with a landscape. So it's a pretty view, you don't really see what's going on on. And as you fly backwards, you're going to go up and over an object or a ridgeline or something in the foreground. And you personally are going to be walking through that scene. So it's a bunch of different motions working together, but it makes this really epic shot. And it really is not that hard to achieve. So you just pull back on the right joystick, which is going to fly the drone backwards. And you just want to time yourself perfectly so that as the drone flies over the ridgeline, you're in a good spot where you're somewhat in the frame and you're walking through and interacting. So this is a great shot when you have these big open landscapes. It just adds this level of dynamic movement as you're interacting with the scene and moving through the scene. Now you don't have to be on a ridgeline to do this. It could be just a big open field, but you're still flying backwards. And as it comes to you, you're somewhere in the middle of that frame walking in one direction. So it's it's the reverse with the reveal. Now move number five is essential for drones and that is the top down. So you just wanna put the drone right above you 
and then look straight down. So you wanna make sure that the gimbal is at 90 degrees pointed straight down. Now you could do different movements with this. Right here is a spin. Now I'm pushing right on the left joystick and the drone is gonna rotate in a circle. Now I like to put it in the super slow mode and then rotate very slowly and then move through the scene. Another way you can use this move is just be a tripod. Just be a camera up in the air looking straight down and don't do anything with the drone. And then you could also move in a direction so you can move forwards or backwards, left or right using the right joystick and then have the drone move slowly across the landscape as you interact with it. All right, so the second tip that I wanna talk about is slow motion. So if your drone has the capabilities to shoot in slow motion, use it to your advantage. Now, a lot of these moves when I was out filming on this mountain, I was shooting in 4K 60. I'm using my DJI Mavic 3, which does shoot in 5.1K, but I don't need 5.1K. I would rather use the 4K 60 so that I can slow down my footage in post. So when I'm shooting at 4K 60, I do my videos in 2997, I can slow it down two times. So I can go at half speed. And when you're working with people, when you're working with yourself and you use 60 frames per second, it's slowed down in a way that makes it look much more cinematic. And so when you're flying your drone and you're doing these different movements, you could slow it down even more. And yeah, it's gonna smooth out your shot, but also you're gonna be moving in half speed, which is gonna make the scene just feel much more dramatic. So here's an example of three of these shots cut back to back in real time. So in 30 frames per second. Now here's these same three shots, slowed down at half speed, cut together. And you can see there's such a difference in feeling and emotion when you're slowing down your footage. So if you have the ability to shoot in 60 frames per second or even 120 frames per second, use it to your advantage and play around with slow motion in your videos. Now move number six is the low orbit. Now this one's unique because you need to have the ability to fly the drone lower than yourself and have the camera point up. Now a lot of drones have the ability to tilt the camera up slightly. So at 90 degrees, the camera's pointed straight out, but a lot of times you can go in your menu and actually allow the camera to point up an extra 30 degrees. So for this move, you're gonna wanna find somewhere where you can stand above the drone and the drone has a little bit of space to go down below you. So for this example, I'm standing out on this point and the mountain kind of falls off in every direction. And that allows me to circle the drone around myself while pointing up. And when you point a camera up at your subject, it gives you that hero pose, it feels powerful. And so this is a great move to do if you have that opportunity because it's kind of like an epic shot. So how you perform this move is you're gonna do an orbit. So it's either gonna be left on the left joystick and right on the right joystick or right on the left joystick and left on the right joystick. And what you're gonna do is circle around yourself. Now, one thing to consider when doing this move is make sure that you have a full 360 that you can spin around. And if you don't, make sure that you're not gonna fly sideways into something. Now, move number seven is the walk into frame. I like to have the drone moving just slightly. So either forwards or backwards or to the side. So for this shot specifically, I'm pushing forward on the right joystick, which is moving the drone forward in space. And as the drone's moving forward, it feels like I'm just getting a shot of the landscape. Well, then I enter into frame. And so use this to your advantage and find different framings that look nice and just have your drone moving slightly. So it feels like a cinematic shot and then have yourself enter into frame, which changes the whole dynamic of this. A lot of times, when I'm doing drone shots of myself, when I'm by myself, I try to create these different dynamic shots where there's multiple things moving so that it feels a lot more cinematic than just one motion happening. So move number eight is the drop down and tilt up. This one's harder to achieve, but it looks pretty awesome. So when you get yourself to a cool location, have the drone descend into space and have the camera tilt up at the same time, keeping yourself centered in the frame throughout the entirety of the motion. So to do this, you're gonna pull down on the left joystick and then you're gonna tilt up on the gimbal and as you do these two motions, you'll create a lot of dynamic movement where you're seeing basically the ground and yourself in that space. But then as the drone comes down and the gimbal tilts up, you're gonna reveal the landscape out in front of you. And if you keep going and go past 90, well then you'll start pointing up at the sky. So it's just another one of these epic hero shots that also does a reveal of the landscape behind wherever you're at. Now the third tip when you're filming yourself is use an ND filter. 
And when you use an ND filter, you wanna shoot at double that of your frame rate so you get motion blur happening behind you. A lot of these motions that we've been talking about, there's gonna be two different things happening. The drone's gonna be focused on you and the background is gonna be moving at a different pace than you. And when you do this and add an ND filter and shoot at double that of your frame rate for your shutter speed, well, then the background is gonna have blur to it. So when you do one of these movements where there is motion happening in the frame, well, you yourself are gonna be sharp. It's gonna be clear. And the, but then your background's gonna have motion blur, so you're gonna create even more separation and even more focus on you. Now, move number nine is one of the ones that I get every time I'm out filming, and that is the orbit. And this is basically the same move as the low orbit, but I wanna put the drone either at eye level or just a little bit above eye level. And when you do the spin around yourself, you're gonna get a whole view of the landscape everywhere in a 360, but you're also placing yourself in that landscape. So when you're doing the shot, think of distance. Now, tip number four, is use parallax. All of this has been combining together, but when you have an ND filter and you're spinning around your subject in these different ways and you're moving faster, you're creating what's called parallax. And so parallax is two different parts of your frame moving at different speeds. A lot of times this is achieved by using a long lens and moving around the subject. However, with a drone, you typically just have a wide lens. So to achieve parallax, which is these two different planes of motion happening, you wanna get close to your subject and then spin fast around your subject. Now, something like the DJI Mavic 3 does have zoom capabilities. The Autel Evo Lite has zoom capabilities. A lot of the newer drones have like zooms and you could use that to your advantage by punching in on your subject, spinning around them, adding the ND filter to create motion blur. Now you have these two different planes of motion happening and you're gonna create a lot of parallax, which is that motion where it feels like the person in front is moving slower than the background, which is moving much faster. And this gets right into move number 10, which is the helix. Now this move is available on some drones as a quick shot. However, when you use quick shot settings, typically you don't have full control over your image. So to do this shot manually, you're gonna be doing an orbit while also pulling backwards and moving up. So this is a big combination. And this is one of those moves where you get to a cool location, you're gonna have both hands on the drone to be able to do this move and to be able to get this epic shot. So you're gonna be pulling down and to the right on the right joystick. And then you're gonna be pushing forwards and left on the left joystick. And that's gonna circle around you and also move up and away. So it basically starts on you filling the frame to you as a small person in this giant landscape. And play around with this one. If you have the ability to do this as a quick shot, works super well, but if you want more control, you can master these moves and get these really cool shots. And then you could also change up how fast you move up and away. So you could make the move happen faster or you could be more dramatic, move much slower around yourself and then pull up and away. You just have a lot more control when you're flying manually. Now, if you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe. And next, check out this video right here, which is gonna help you craft better videos when you're out as a solo creator. I'll see you on the next video.